back in the year 2015, UK mobile network operators Vodafone and 3 each secured 20 MHz of spectrum in the L band, which was acquired from Qualcomm. This L band runs from 1452 to 1492 MHz, and Vodafone acquired the first section, so 1452 to 1472 and 3 the second half which is 1472 to 1492. This spectrum is to be used as supplementary downlink so it's not time division duplex where both uplink and downlink share based on time that single block of spectrum. In this case each network spectrum can only be used as a downlink carrier for them. So another carrier has to be aggregated with the supplementary downlink in order for there to be an uplink connection between the user device and the mast or e node B. However, we've not really seen supplementary downlink deployments happening in the UK or abroad until actually quite recently. And this is because of a number of sort of complexities such as the Hardware vendor support hasn't had the radio modules for say supplementary downlink until fairly recently and then device support was non-existent and actually even today is very limited in terms of sort of how many popular devices actually support the band 32 supplementary downlink. Nevertheless 3 has decided to deploy the band 32 supplementary downlink onto a number of sites in the city of Oxford. These sites look very much like traditional high capacity shared EE and 3 sites, triple high band Huawei antenna, EE's band 7 Huawei RIUs and Comscope antennas which look fairly similar to ones that you would traditionally see. However the high band ports or at least two of the high band ports on these Comscope antennas support frequencies going down to the L band, so the 14, 1500 megahertz region, where normal high band ports stop around about 1700 megahertz, which is as far as they need to go down for 1800 megahertz band 3. My friend who visited Oxford to observe this supplementary downlink deployment was using a Google Pixel which supports band 32 aggregated with band 20 and that's what you see in this screenshot where band 25 megahertz is aggregated with the band 32 at 20 megahertz and as expected in a speed test the majority of the downlink speed comes from the supplementary downlink because it has 20 megahertz of carrier bandwidth compared to the 5 megahertz downlink on the band 20. The deployment of supplementary downlink on 3's network is quite profound at this point in time because if we look at a typical 3 mast it has 5 MHz from the band 20 and 15 MHz from the band 3 so that adds up to 20. The supplementary downlink of course is 20 MHz so that's doubling the 4G capacity on the site which is a very big jump. Furthermore, the supplementary downlink is mid-band spectrum. It's not low band like the 800 MHz, but it's also not high band like the 1800 MHz. And also, as the supplementary downlink is downlink only, it's not constrained by the uplink either. Recently, 3 also commenced Refarming of their band 1 2100 MHz from 3G over to 4G, creating a 10 MHz 4G carrier. So, of course, then if we add up all of the spectrum I've spoken so far together, the 20 MHz of conventional inverted commas 4G spectrum, the 20 MHz of supplementary downlink, and then the 10 MHz of refarmed spectrum, that's 50 MHz of downlink 4G spectrum, which is a lot when you consider 3's customer number. Although, of course, Three's customers are very high data users. Although this does not end the amount of spectrum that Three possesses, 
through the takeover of UK broadband, they also have a significant quantity of spectrum around the 3.4 gigahertz region, which is used for fixed wireless broadband in central London. So all in all, actually, three have got a very bright future ahead of them in terms of spectrum, depending on how much they roll it out, how they optimize it, and so on. The upcoming Spectrum auction provides 3 the ability to acquire even further radio spectrum for that portfolio. However, I think the main determinant to their ongoing network quality will be how much money they are willing and able to spend in deploying what they sort of already have. 3 are also looking for a new radio network vendor. Currently they use Samsung but they have said that they are sort of looking for other vendors and suppliers to run their network. So all in all I think 3 is going to be a rather interesting network to watch over the coming months and years to see how they develop and make use of what they already have as well as anything else that they gain in the future. So on that note, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one where it might be sunny a day as it is today.